Do you know the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Do you know how a Christian can live and experience this fruit in their daily living? Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios, and this is our devotional mana, a daily adventure with God. Throughout the entire week last week, we spoke about what the works of the flesh mean. I believe Paul gives us an excellent exposition in Galatians chapter 5 when he says that the acts of the flesh are obvious and we see how the works of the flesh shows what governs the life of a person but just as obvious in the same chapter chapter 5 of Galatians in verse 22 the apostle Paul says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law and so just as there are people who are governed by the flesh and this is why Paul gives this list and he says many more that he does not mention so Paul here is saying that there are people who allow themselves to be governed by the Holy Spirit and this is why there is a different lifestyle manifested in them so throughout this week I would like for you to be able to compare and understand what is it that governs our life the most and so write to us let us know what is it that governs my life the most you can say well in my daily living 24 7 for me I think I am governed more by the spirit or perhaps the flesh governs me more than the spirit or let us know what areas you believe the spirit governs you the most and what areas the flesh governs you the most and we will reply to all of those who write to us okay so why does Paul talk to us in regards to or give us this list from verses 22 to 23 speaking about the fruit I believe that the key to understand what Paul is saying here I believe is expressed in the metaphor that he uses he talks about fruit and all the words the beautiful conjunction of words that he uses here he talks about the fruit as something singular something that there is derived from the spirit so the fruit that Paul is talking about here is the natural product of life if a tree is alive it gives fruit and it goes along with the fact of being a living tree fruit is obtained when a tree has life inside of it and so why does a tree give fruit it's not because there is a law of nature that dictates that it must give fruit instead simply it is due to the life that it has inside that stems from the ground the water that nourishes it its roots and through its sap and every branch it has so a tree does not give fruit because it is obeying the laws of nature but instead because it is a living tree behaving according to what it is so what Paul is telling us with this list of beautiful qualities is the following these are the qualities that God will produce in the daily lives of people of a person because the life of God himself is working inside of him or her and so imagine how beautiful the life of God will give fruit just as it does on a tree and this occurs simply because that is how God is and that is what God produces we have studied this when we spoke about the Holy Spirit saying that the Spirit of God is the Spirit of Christ allowing the qualities of the life of Christ to grow in the lives of each one of us as God's children and so what is Paul talking about when he is speaking about fruit what do you believe he is talking about the character of a child of God and unfortunately we must say today this character is very undervalued in a big part of life and the activities of Christians within a church we often live on tactics on techniques strategies talking about success and many other things but truly ask yourself how is your heart inside inside each one of you so this week I want us to discuss the qualities of this list that the Apostle Paul is making it's a notice that the first quality is love and so the first quality that Paul mentions is love and it's not surprising because Paul had already said previously that what is important is the faith that acts through love 
in that we must serve one another in love, in that the law of the Old Testament can be resumed in the commandment of love your neighbor as you love yourself. When Paul places love in first place in this list, he is telling us that this is something very important that should grow in us. The Bible says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And it says that Jesus replied that this is the first and the most important of the commandments. The second is like this one, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And so what must we say with complete assurance? We must say that the love that the Apostle Paul is referring to as the first fruit of the Spirit has to do not with the love of God, but with, lo with loving our neighbor. In other words, the first fruit of the Spirit is not so much our love for God, but instead our mutual love as Christians, above all our differences and barriers. Paul is not referring to just feelings and that we must treat each other with kindness and gentleness, but instead that through practical trials, through real trials, we learn to love and accept one another. That we learn that the true language of love is to care for one another, to provide for one another, to, care, to take care of one another, to encourage each other and support each other mutually, even when it sometimes hurts to do so. Love in action, love that dissolves divisions, love that joins people, that brings people together, and that is constantly seeking what is best for the other and not causing harm. And so ask yourself this morning, how important is it for us to love one another in this way? Why is love first in the list of the Apostle Paul regarding the fruit of the Spirit? And Paul himself had a lot to say in regards to the importance for Christians to love one another mutually. But let's also talk about another man who spoke a great deal about love. This was John. And John talks about this topic a great deal three times in his gospel. It is registered that Jesus is giving his disciples the commandment to love one another. The first is in John 13 verses 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Then in John 15 verse 12. He says, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. In the same John 15, but verse 17, it says, This is my command, love each other. And so let's, con let's continue five times in his first letter. John reminds us that this commandment is of God, and he goes into great detail, explaining to us how we should love one another, not just with words, but with acts and truth. And let's create a list. So take your pen and paper and take note of this, these important verses. 1 John 3, 11. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. In the same chapter of 1 John 3, verses 17 and 18. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And in the same 1 John 3, verse 23, it says, And this is his command, to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded us. Let's move on to chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And in the same chapter 4 of 1 John, verses 11 and 12. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And so look at all these verses. Paul talks about this type of love as the first evidence that God is working in our lives. This is why the first fruit of God's Spirit within each one of us 
gives evidence and this evidence is that the love gives us several things that we can observe together. John says when Christians love one another, this is evidence that God's love resides in us. Now pay close attention to what I'm going to say. John uses the expression twice, saying, this is the message we have received. He does it in 1 John 1.5. He says, this is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And so if we walk in light, knowing that he is light, and then we confess our sins, then we will know God and know that we belong to him. But if you read 1 John 3.10, once again he uses the same expression. He says, anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. For this is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. And so I ask that we read that we read these two verses so that you would understand that for John, both to walk in light and to walk in love are the two most basic and essential parts of being a true Christian. Tremendous, no? The Bible is very clear, my dear family. So, I repeat again, to have faith in God through Jesus and to love one another as Christians go hand in hand. Our eternal life is, re is received through faith, but it is demonstrated by love. How can we know if a tree is alive? But well, we see its sprouts, its leaves, its fruits, and its fruits are evidence that the tree has life within it. Where there is fruit, there is life. Where there isn't fruit, then the tree is dead. And so I ask, how do we know if a believer or a church is alive? Look for the love. Where there is love, there is life. When Christians truly put to practice love, this is evidence and proof that God's life is present in them and amongst them. How beautiful. I love God's word. And to notice that love is a matter of life and death. And to reinforce how important this is, John gives us two examples. Chapter 3, verse 14. It says in 1 John, chapter 3, verses 12 through 15, he gives a negative example saying that Cain was filled with hate. And this hate led him to death. And this is what happens. Notice that in verse 15 of 1 John 3, he gives a very severe warning saying, anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. Once again here, John is repeating the words of Jesus. Now, what is the positive example? The positive example is Jesus. And this is in 1 John 3, 16. Christ was filled with love. And what did this love lead him to? It led him to give his life, not to take a life like Cain. And so the essence of love is to learn to sacrifice myself for others. As Jesus himself explained when he said, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for my sheep. And Paul says, God shows his love for us. That although we were sinners, Christ died for us. Father, thank you for this morning and thank you for allowing us to understand that the true fullness of the Holy Spirit is to allow God's love to overflow in our hearts. Thank you for each listener of Mana. Beginning this new day and this new week, we place this challenge in front of you. Teach us the true love that is yielded as fruit of having the life of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Bless us, guard us, and accompany us in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. And this topic is so interesting that tomorrow we will dedicate another day to talk about the topic of love as fruit of the Holy Spirit. Blessings to all.